I'll go first. I'll go first. So you can look here, and I'll talk. All right. All right, man. So first of all, you're back again. It's just been a few weeks. What was the biggest uh, factor in you deciding to come back so quickly? Um, the opportunity was there. Uh, it's, you know, what they say when opportunity knocks, open the door. So open the door, the opportunity come in, have a seat. So that's why I'm here. And your opportunity is a, against a veteran of the sport, a guy that you, you've watched plenty of times, I'm sure. And so yeah. when you're fighting a guy that you, you do know so well and you've seen kind of over the years, does that add a little bit more, uh, you know, fuel to the fire? Is it a little more fun to fight a guy that you recognize and you know about? Uh, a mixture of all of it. A mixture of all of it. Uh, oh, excuse me. It's cool to fight against somebody with so much experience because, uh, you know, kinda, it kind of it helps me test my skills. Um, I've been in this, I've been fighting for what, 10 years, something like that. Jeez. So, uh, time flies. So, yeah. So, just the fact that, I, you know, I develop my skills over the time and I get to test it against somebody who will, you know, who's been through it all. You know what I mean? It's fun. It's great. You had the first experience of, you know, coming to the Apex and fighting with no crowd and stuff just, just two or three weeks ago. Yeah. And now you're going to do it again. What do you think of fighting with no crowd and kind of in this uh, pandemic era of MMA, if you will? Um, I didn't mind it because it, I'm, I'm a contender series guy. So we didn't have a crowd anyways. So um, it's, it was the same. Just go out there and just fight. I, I, I can't really focus on the crowd anyways when I'm, somebody's two or five trying to punch me in the face. So, yeah. You talked a little bit uh, about, you know, in 2019, you had a lot of distractions going on and, uh, you know, with, with working as a bartender and all these things and being able to, you know, just get enough sleep to train properly was difficult last year. Now this year, you, you said you got a refresh focus. Mm -hmm. You come in, you, it's a kind of a springboard for you this year. Uh, what has been the biggest change in the, in the pandemic that has allowed you to kind of focus on you and get to where you want to be? Um, I would say... The biggest change, I would say just being able to solely focus on fighting, nothing else. Like I don't have to worry about, like, oh, what's my schedule for next weekend? Uh, do I need, what do I need for the bar? <laughs> to what cups I need? Like, I don't have to focus on any of the other external stresses, you know? I could just train. And I think this is, like, the best moment for everybody. Because all you, all we can do is what we love to do, which is train and fight. That's it. You can't do nothing else. You can't go to clubs. You can't, you know what I mean? You can't really go out to the restaurants, none of that. So just train and fight. So why not abuse that as much as possible? And I wanted to ask, how satisfying was that, that win that you got just three weeks ago, coming off of the difficult end that you had in 2019, and then to get that, that big victory pretty quickly as well and come out healthy, how satisfying was it for you? Oh, man, it, it was really satisfying. It's, it's rejuvenating, you know? Because, what, last year... I went 0 and 2, you know, so it sucked. Well, you don't get one and one because one was a no contest. But even still, even that no contest, I lost, you know. And so being able to spring back board, spring back for a win, to get back in that winning column was just amazing. You know, it, it's something what I needed, what my fan base needed, my friends, my family, like everybody who supports me. Right? You know, it was something that we needed. And, uh, it gave us hope that, you know, we're still in this fight. We can still do it. And when you get a win like that, you, you ride an emotional high into this next one, considering it's just right around the corner. You know, sometimes you, you get a win and you wait six months, eight months, a year, whatever. You're waiting three weeks before you jump back in there. Are you still kind of riding that emotional high and that momentum into this fight? Uh, no. I, to me, I'm, a, I'm a, like a reset person. So it, it's the past. You know, you accept the past. It's over and done. So I won three weeks ago. It happened. It's done. Had my fun the week after, you know what I mean? I went camp with my family. It was great. And uh, then I had to get back to work. So it's just back to work. It's like from going from ground zero all over again. So we went up, then we went right back down to build back up. That's it. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. I think yeah. someone else is going to ask a question. It's just... Yeah, Mike, we're going to try this again. We're going to take Gabriel Gonzalez from Cape Side Press. All right, cool. Hey, Mike, can you hear me this time? I'm sorry, man. <laughs> sorry, yeah, I can hear you. Um, yeah, so if I missed it, I apologize. Technical issues. Uh, just really want to ask how this fight came together seemingly so quickly. So um, I, so after I, I beat Pretz, you know, I was injury-free, didn't have nothing wrong with me. It was golden. And uh, 
I got to the I was at the airport and Joe Joe Lozon and uh, Steve Mays, my two coaches, they both texted me. I was like, "Stay ready because the way everything's going right now, you don't know what can happen. Opportunity will come." So I said, "All right, cool." So he's they're like, "You know, take your time, enjoy your time off." And then, you know, a wife and the kids. We had we enjoyed our uh, you know our, our camping trip because we planned a camping trip the following week. And then right after that, I was done with the camping trip. I went right back to the gym. Um, did a little like did a little bit of work with some teammates. And then as soon as I was done training, got a phone call from Tyson, my manager. And he was like, hey, remember when I told you to stay ready? I'm like, yeah. He's like, we got something. You're fighting Ed Harmon. And he's like, oh, you know, Tyson, you want, you want to take the fight? I'm like, yeah, take that fight. Let's run it. And he was like, all right, yeah, cool. So that's how we ended up getting it. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad for Ed because, like, he went through, like, what, like five or six opponent changes, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. It's it's good. It's all good. I mean, we'll certainly be asking him about that. Can I ask, you, you just fought recently. You're right back at the Apex. I'm assuming they have you at the same hotel in Vegas. I mean, does it feel like deja vu? I mean, when you're in the UFC, it's very rare that you're going straight back to the same exact place immediately. <laughs> I know, right? Um, it, it just It just feels comfortable. Because I was already here, you know. I, uh, I'm a person I get comfortable quick. I was already here, so I already know how everything that happened and how everything works and everything. So I just adapted and just soak up, soak it all up. Do you do things like ask for the same hotel room or anything like that? No, 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 no. <laughs> nah, I just, uh, I just took whatever they gave me. Gotcha. Um, you talk about Ed Herman. Obviously, this guy's got a lot more UFC fights than a, a lot of people. I mean, just talk about him and your assessment of him as an opponent. Uh, Ed Herman, he's good. He's tough. He's so tanky. I, I didn't realize how tanky he was until I went back and watched the fights. He's very tanky. So um, that's something that you got to take into you got to take into you know consideration. Because I can't think of, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go blow him out of one in the first round. Eh, guys like that, doesn't happen. So, you know, I, I got to be smart, more persistent. Discipline and persistence is, I think, what is not what I think, is what beats him is, is that. So uh, as long as I am di stay disciplined and stay persistent, I, I'll, I will get the win for sure. Um, but, yeah, he's good. And he's really good at bringing people into brawls. And he, you know, he's a brawler himself, so he's really good at that. So it's it's gonna be awesome. Hey, thanks, Mike. Good luck. No problem. Thank you. And we will take our next set of questions from Danny Segura with MMA Junkie. Hey, Mike. Um, just quickly, you you said uh, he was tanky. What do you mean by that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Durable. Durable. He's very durable. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Uh, yeah, no, I figured it'd be something along those, those lines. <laughs> and uh, and obviously, this is uh, somewhat of a short notice fight for you. Um, in these type of fights, like, is there much time to strategize, or do you kind of just go in there and fight? Um, well, we we didn't really have much time to game plan with him, um, so we just kind of just went in there and fight. The only thing we really like touched up on is like. Uh, a lot of his clinch work. He has good clinch work. He, he's really good on the clinch. Um, granted, I know y'all like, well, you just wanted the clinch. But yeah, his, his clinch is good too. So that's something to take and consider it. He, he just has a different style of clinching. Muay Thai is my dominant background. So I have more Muay Thai clinching. He is his wrestling. So he has more that Greco uh, team quest type of clinch. But um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a clash of styles. It's going to be cool. Yeah. And, and as a guy that's, you know, I know you've been in the UFC now for a couple of years, but, you know, as a guy that's been fairly new, let's just say, um, is, is it nice to get these type of opponents? And is, are these the kind of names that you're looking for, like these veterans that, you know, have been around for quite some time and, and are quite uh, well known by, by fans? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I, um, I, I like this fight a lot. I really do. Um, matter of fact, not like I love this fight a lot. Um, it's cool to fight someone from a whole nother generation. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like more the newer breed, more the newer generation, and he's more the uh, the older generation. What I what inspired me to get here, he's one of the guys. You know, so it, it's cool to test your skills against the guys you was watching. I think it's awesome. Yeah, 
And uh, what about the weight cut? Obviously, another weight cut uh, within a sort of short uh, amount of span, uh, time span. Um, how, how do you feel weight cut wise? And uh, is that ever an issue like taking fights? Like, oh, wait, let me let me check up on my weight first. No. So <laughs> I didn't balloon up. So that was good. Uh, they got me at a good time. I was like, I was like walking around, I would say like 223 ish, 225. So that's good. It, like, I was like, yeah. So that, that was more an incentive to take the fight because my weight was already low. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, for sure. And I know you're a Twitch uh, streamer. What are you playing these days? Uh, recently, I haven't been able to set up a consistent stream schedule due to this, all the training I've been doing. But um, when I get back, I'll stop focusing on that. And the game is always Siege. I play a lot of Siege. That's like okay. my lifestyle game. But right now, what I've been playing in the room on Fight Week is uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Man, that game is so fun. <laughs> it's dope. Highly recommend it. It's really good. Uh, definitely going to check that out. All right. Thanks, Mike. Best of luck yeah. this week. Thank you.